What's up guys, my name is Barry Michael Doyle and today I'm going to be showing you how to use ESLint for developing your React and React Native applications. Now this is a follow up video from our previous video, which you can find a link to in the description below or the annotations on the screen. That will just show you how to set up React Native applications using Expo. That said, ESLint can be used for your React web development or your normal React Native development without Expo. but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to use the project that we created in the last video. Right, so here's the coding screen that we got set up yesterday, just from creating our React application. It didn't do much, it just had this open up app JS text in it, and that was our application. So let me show you a common problem we have with programming. You can create a whole bunch of spaces and ugly things here, and create random semicolons and all that. And your project will work fine. Um, there won't be any issues. We don't need a semicolon there, but it will still work. And we can put stuff around in spaces and make things really ugly if we want to. Uh, put some spaces there. Tighten these together, but then at the same time, I don't know, put some more spaces there and million spaces there. And rename this package. This will definitely break your application because it won't find the React Native package. But you see, we don't have any errors on our screen. And it's nice to be told when you're really messing up. Now, whether you're messing up to an application breaking level or you're just messing up to a fact that your friend is going to hate reading your code, this is really ugly to look at. And yeah, just hard to understand what's going on, even though it's a really basic application. Now, a great way to solve this is to install ESLint because that will show you where your issues are and how to fix it. Now, the first thing you want to do is check out these extensions over here. I've already got this typed in, but type in ESLint, and then a whole bunch of stuff should pop up, and you just want to get this ESLint package by Dirk Bomer, however you pronounce his name. Just get it, install it. I've already got it installed, so that process is straightforward. Now, when we get back to application, we need to make sure that we actually include this ESLint package into our project. So I've opened up my command prompt. I'm using the git bash one, but you can use any normal command prompt. And what you're going to want to do is navigate to wherever you kept your project. So I kept mine in documents dash YouTube dash test, and that is my project directory. And what you want to do is I'm going to put this in the description, but type in npm install dash dash save console save dash dev and then eslint config dash rally coding. Now, this is a specific configuration by rally coding, which is a bunch of courses created by a guy called Stephen Grider. And he's taught me some amazing React Native stuff and normal web reacts as well. So I really recommend you check out his videos if you want to learn some cool stuff, but I'm going to try to do some cool tutorials as well. And mine are free, so that helps. But yeah, while that installs, if it doesn't work, try redoing it while opening the command prompt as an administrator. That generally helps. Now, as that installs, you have to do one final thing. It should be creating this package here. It's going to create this dev dependencies, ESLint config, rally coding, whatever version it's at. That will be created for you. So that's technically what that line of code did there. Well, it's not code, just that command line did it installed this package and it's also somewhere chilling here in your node modules but there's a lot of those so I'm not going to go through that. Now the final thing you have to do to make this actually work is you have to add a file to your root directory called eslint rc. It's dot eslint rc. And then here we create an object with one one key value and it's called I can't spell extends colon and exactly the name of that passage, we said eslint config rally coding. Now, if we save this and we go back to our application that we've made really ugly, you see all these red little lines here saying, hey, what the heck? So here's an example this from multiple spaces found before from, shouldn't be a space there. Multiple spaces found before React, shouldn't be a space there. So that's working. Here it's just like, can't find that weird package, it's because this is named funny. There we go, we got that problem solved. Here it says space required before the end of this. Oh, my spaces are not working. 
and there it wants a space there and it's also like please get rid of those create a space there and fix that and there we go there's our import sorted here it just says you know unnecessary spaces all over the place why is it not showing anyway that's indicating that they are weird spaces that we don't need unnecessary semicolons we don't need oh well, it needs one it just doesn't need like seven of them and there's unnecessary space get rid of these semicolons more pointless space here we get rid of these semicolons you might notice if you have this it wants you to have a new line required at the end of the file so these are just all a bunch of things that are going to make your code a lot cleaner and easier to read for other people and it's nice to stick to a standard so that way you'll spot your problems much quicker because everything's much neater and it will point out a lot of your problems. So that's pretty much it for ESLint, but I can tell you this is going to save you a lot of headaches. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe and leave some comments with some feedback if you can. Cool, keep well guys. Happy coding. Ciao.